So in this episode, what I'm gonna do is hit basically the growers in the tank. Give you a look at them and show you the progress that they're making in the system. So with that being said, let's get to it. So like I said in the opening, uh, this week is going to deal with the corals that have shown the most growth in the tank. Um, we'll mention some of the other things that are going on, but primarily to deal with the corals that have shown uh, significant growth over the last week or so. Um, I know everybody likes the wide shot and that's why we're on it right now. So this way you can get a full shot of the tank. I am gonna be dealing with some of the issues that are going on in the tank um, in the last week and a half or so. So um, let's get to the close-ups and uh, we can go through what progress has been going on. So first we're at the acro rock. Um, right here you can see um, there is a mixture of rocks. The three, um, the two in the middle and the one on the left is Fish of Hex acros. Uh, the one on the right was from Aquarium Cast Center, and this one has always been in my tank. That's the infamous Barney, uh, Jason Fox Barney Coral. There's been a lot of growth on that particular coral. You could see the ends, how um, they're lighter than the rest. That's actually a pale blue with some neon tips to it. And that's, compared to last week's update, the growth on this coral has been ridiculous. Also, including um, the Fisher Hex corals, you can see uh, really clearly here, a lot of these corals have encrusted over their plugs. Um, they're encrusting now onto the rock. The Aquarium Care Center coral um, is encrusting over the plug as well. Right here, you can see how that is encrusting over and also even though um, you can't really tell from this shot, this acro right here has grown significantly out towards the rock and the more branches are coming out. I'll try and get a side shot of that in a minute. Right here you can see the uh, little shot of the side of that one acro from Fisher Hex, how long it is and also right there is the Fisher Hex Millie. Uh, the encrusting, you can see right at the bottom right um, well, more towards the middle right of that one. That light area is not adhesive, it's not epoxy, it's not glue. That is the coral encrusting out over the rock. So a lot of significant growth has been happening from these pieces up on the SPS rock. Moving down a little bit onto the shelf, here's another three pieces of SPS. There's the piece from Billy Pipes, the uh, one from Respy, as well as this piece from Worldwide Corals, uh, you can see now that the flow in the area, I've kind of been playing around with my flow and increased it in this area. Since that's happened, um, the amount of growth has really taken off. The coral from Lee Spy continues to grow down over the plug and is now onto the rock. And just really, really amazed at how these corals are starting to fill out. Over in the back corner of the tank, you can see the, the red Montipora is a uh, Continually filling out, it's starting to come down more and more instead of the way it was growing, um, stretching up towards the light. It's getting the proper light and you can see the edges, how um, lighter they are than the rest of the coral, that's growth and uh, it continues to show new growth every day. The Hollywood Stunner Chalice, this piece that was pale and be, uh, had been shaded out from the main piece that was on the overflow, has now fully colored up and healed and is starting to fill out and fan out. Intentions on this may be before the Montipora grows to the point where it's shading this one out, I may want to put this into a new home. So um, keep your eye out for updates on that. Right here across to the other side of the tank is the main colony of the Hollywood Stunner, continually to, uh, growing out and as its name, stunning how it's turning out and starting to form up into a chalice. 
the Red Digi as well as the Forest Fire Digi from Fish of Hex. Um, these continually grow out and um, the Forest Fire is starting to fill out more and more and starting to crust onto the uh, overflow. Now onto the eight cans. Um, this piece right here, the uh, orange ones with the bright green centers, that has started to come off the plug and, and now is in desperate need of some rock to go on as well as most of them. I've been kind of neglecting and, and with the growth that's happening with them, I really don't want to touch them or stick my hands in the tank. But it's getting towards the time where um, I'm going to have to do something with that. Maybe finding a nice size rock where I can put these pieces uh, on all together and make it fill out into a nice eight can garden. The colors are, are ridiculous and ever, and I can only say that the, the feeding regimen I have them on um, using uh, coral candy has um, basically been the reason why these pieces are coloring up so much. Here are the other two pieces and, and again, I think once I get a rock to put them all on, it'll make, get breathe new light into uh, all the A cans as far as the way they look and appear. The green frog spawn has really, uh, basically in the last week or so, started to fill out more and more again. Uh, I did increase my white light, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's got something to do with it. And my water parameters being spot on, everything's starting to perk up and really look its best. On the left side of the tank, uh, he, right next to the red setosa is the other piece I picked up from Travis. That's encrusted fully around this plug and it's starting to stretch down towards the rock. As you see, the red setosa is really taken off as well. And it's stretching right around the back of that rock. Um, I've received a lot of compliments on the torch since it's moved here. And no, Billy, I am not selling this coral. So forget it, get it out of your mind. Now right here on the um, mushroom rock, one of the mushrooms has released. I, it went missing, I know where it is now, it's in the back of the rock structure and has uh, latched onto a rock back there, so I'm not gonna move it, but you can see in the, um, since it's drifted away, what it's left behind is a bunch of babies that are now colonizing this rock. Also, one of the problems that, are, that this will lead us to is right here, you can see these pale light pink marks on the rock themselves. Um, they're all over the tank. Now, if you're ever looking at your rocks and you happen to see these pale spots, well, right there is usually the cause of it. That is an Asterina starfish. It's the light ones. Um, there's two different types. There's a light and a dark one. The light ones seem to like to prey on and feed on the coral and algae that's in your tank and on your rock specifically. Uh, the darker ones will be the ones that'll go after your zoanthids. Um, the remedy to this is a harlequin shrimp will come into the tank and uh, it will prey upon those and clean this, this whole tank up in most likely a week. As far as the other pr um, problem I'm having in the tank, as you look at the um, maize brain and the birthday cake Leptoceras uh, with its tentacles out, is the Aptasia that is going on in the tank. There you can see the Fiji fires have a ton of them in it. Uh, unfortunately, right now I can't do anything about it. The thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be picking up a file fish from John at Aquarium Care Center. Um, that will pretty much eradicate the problem. And also, since it is a slow swimmer, by the time that when the tank gets cleaned up, that'll be um, the reason I'll be able to hopefully get it out of the tank at that point before it starts picking at some coral. But um, with all the stuff that I've looked at and researched and the comments that were left behind by you guys, uh, I know there was a big debate on whether it was going to be shrimp or chemical or um, the file fish. Well, the file fish pretty much won out. Um, calc paste and, and Aptasia X is not really going to do what I needed to do because of the locations of some of the uh, Aptasia. And the shrimp 
are just not even going to be, um, it's a 50-50 shot on whether they're going to work, but also they will definitely prey on my coral, so I'm not going to even go there. Last is the rock flower anemones, and you can see they've really opened up. The colors are amazing, and uh, with these guys, I feed the mysis like once a week. You can see the bottom one. Right here, the tentacles are coming out really, really nicely, and the colors are just simply amazing on these uh, anemones, and I'm pretty much sold on these at this point, even though at one point I was totally against having them in my tank, but I'm very happy I did. So that's basically going to be it for this week. Um, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will get back to you on it. Uh, there's much more to come and a lot of uh, videos that I'm working on for you. So until next time, this is Scott and I will see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.